Hi, welcome to Life Hacks. And the question is, what are the behaviors of a confident person? Well, I'm a confidence coach. So before lockdown, I used to run loads of workshops on confidence. And what stops people from being confident is being judged by others, is not even being judged by others, is giving, is caring what other people think, is imagining oh my God, that person's not going to like me or whatever it is. It's subconscious. It's very subconscious. And what, one of my things as a confidence coach was to get rid of that. And once I could get rid of that, then these people naturally became confident. They naturally became outgoing. They naturally uh, went and did what they needed to do without worrying about uh, anything. Because so the biggest confidence trick is stop caring what other people think of you. There's a, there's a famous quote what other people think of you is none of your business. So stay out of it. You know, like what other people think of you is nothing to do with you. Nothing at all. It's, it's down to them. It's, it's their bullshit. Uh, there's, you don't need to take it on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that people learn as they get older is learn to not care what other people think. So you, know, you notice like old people, they don't care. They'll just say whatever they want to say and they don't care what other people think. And because they've learned, they've learned over their uh, many, many years that what other people think is relevant, it's, it's meaningless. So go out there, do things without caring what other people think. Once you can do that, once it's not even in your mind, um, you will become very confident and you'll start pushing ahead, growing, and all kinds of stuff. Because the... the the reason you care is because we come from the hunter-gatherer period when we lived in tribes. And so our survival is, as a hunter-gatherer depended on our tribe. So if you were walking you know, in the wilderness and you came across a foreign tribe, you were a threat to them, they would kill you. Um, so what you would do when you're... Uh, so, so what your tribe thinks of you matters a lot. Because if you're weird in your own tribe, they could, they could oust you. They could, you. they could kick you out of the tribe. And then you're dead because, you know, the, the wilderness is a dangerous place. And your security came from the numbers in your tribe. Uh, so you didn't want to appear odd. So you did whatever was normal in your tribe. It was easy to do things that are normal in your tribe. So if, you're, if every day, you know, when you enter through a door, everybody in your tribe goes, ooh, 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 you know. You would do that as well. You'd find it hard not to do that if everybody else is doing it around you. Uh, and so when you, and this is why when you walk into a lift, your brain shuts down, makes you quiet. It's because it thinks that you've just walked into a, into a foreign tribe and you're the only one there. And so what you're trying to do when you're on a lift and you're by yourself and the lift is full is your brain, your subconscious mind, your reptilian brain, is trying to make you as small and quiet and timid as possible so that the tribe, the foreign tribe, doesn't see you as a threat and doesn't kill you. So if it doesn't see you as a threat, they'll just ignore you, hopefully, and you, be, you go, go out on your way. You can see this on the tube. You know, like um, when you see a group of people get on the tube, they're boisterous, they're loud. And as each one of them, as one of them gets off after each stop, uh, they're still loud, but they're slowly getting quieter until you get to the last person. As soon as you get to the last person, the last person looks, you know, um, who's left on the on the tube, and they will go sh shut down completely. They will go straight into their head. They'll pull their phone out and they'll go into their phone because you know uh, they're no longer in their tribe. They're now in a foreign tribe, and so they have to protect themselves. So that's the best one. And the way I train myself to uh, not care what other people think is I did started doing Toastmasters. That helped a lot, getting up on stage. And the other thing that helped a lot was stand-up comedy. Uh, but what helped stand-up comedy uh, was going out and talking to strangers. So I used to walk uh, on tubes, on trains, on buses, uh, on the streets, in, in pubs, and go, oh, I love your haircut. Oh, that's a great T-shirt you got there, mate. Oh, your glasses are awesome, dude. Oh, wow, your, your eyebrows are awesome. You know, like that kind of stuff. And if you do that quickly to strangers, complete strangers, walking on the street or the tube or the train, and you do that to about 50 people, one after the other, really fast, you'll notice you'll suddenly become really free in your head you'll suddenly feel empowered. You'll suddenly feel really confident.
And for the next two, three, four hours, you'll feel really confident and really energized because you, you, you know, because what you've done is there is your reptilian brain has been trying to shut you down, make you less confident, timid, uh, so you don't get killed. But when you go and ping people like this, oh, I love your haircut, I love this, what you're giving your uh, reptilian brain is a reference experience that nothing's going to happen. You know, nothing bad is going to happen. Look, I'm pinging all these people, but nothing, nothing bad has happened. And so eventually, once you've done about 50 of them, the, sub, the reptilian brain goes, all right, he's right. Uh, nothing is going to happen. Nothing did happen. So it stops trying to um, um, stop you. So it lets go. And when it lets go, it's, it's very empowering. Very empowering. Enjoy it.